of us doing anything. So for today's video, we have three parts. They're gonna be the reference, then going into Blender to apply the reference. We have a bonus tip that I have for you guys where we actually do some other things with the tutorial that we're going to be learning today. It is to make these radial arrays. And the radial arrays are used in a lot of different artworks. We have a ton of different people using radial arrays for different projects. You see them here in some different um, characters and different references. And uh, it, I just got these off of Google Images, threw them in the Canva. And ArtStation is actually a wonderful place to get really, really high quality uh, assets like these. So we're in Blender and we're actually add a modifier called Geometry Nodes. This effect is actually pretty simple. Geometry Nodes. And then we're gonna do a mesh circle. And then we're going to go instance on points. And what that does is it just creates a ton of instances on the mesh. But since we don't have any other objects yet, we have to add some object objects to our scene. So, so again, if you can hold down control and right click at the same time, you can click on the ones that you want to import. I'm only going to import a few because I've already crashed Blender quite a few times. Now that I have those, I'm going to right click set origin geometry to origin. Bam. I have exactly what we were looking for. I am going to get these out of the way. Okay. So again, we are in here. We've got the default cube, but I think we can use it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to give it a geometry nodes modifier by clicking on new in the geometry tab add a mesh circle two is instances on points and your object will disappear but when we go into instance uh, we can choose one of these objects you can pin the geometry nodes at the bottom and that makes it stay there and then you can if you click and drag from the outliner you can pull it straight into geometry nodes and plug the geometry socket right into the instance on points node. Once you're there, however, things just look kind of wonky because we don't, we're not setting the rotation yet. So if you add a, a line Euler to vector node and plug that into the rotation, it'll actually be able to um, align it to the normal once you plug in a normal node into the vector, voila. And that is the bulk of our effect. It's very simple. Like I said, it's only these few nodes and it works really, really well. You can throw the scale down if you select them all at the same time. You can also turn the radius up and there you go fully procedural super easy um, but there's a few more things that we can do with this and when you translate instances you can rotate and move them in certain directions and this is really powerful this is where a lot of the animation actually comes from and again because it's in geometry nodes it's fully procedural and it's really easy to do them all at the same time so we're going to rotate instances and now we can move them in full synchronization and it looks really great, but there's even more that we can do to this. If you add a join geometry node, and then highlight your previous nodes, control shift D to keep them all together. Um, you can then add another layer to your array. And like I said, this is where things get really interesting because we can continue to 
we'll add these layers as many times as we need. And we have a ton of totally high quality free assets that we've already downloaded. So there's no reason to not use them as much as we can. And the really cool thing about this, at least in my opinion, is that when you get really close here, like in the animation that I showed at the beginning, you can create all sorts of different objects and different patterns that you wouldn't have even had otherwise because the geometry nodes makes the radius or the object so close that they slowly sh kind of shrink in just like uh, they would in a mirror modifier or something. So we have only four layers here. And I mean, you, you've seen it in real time. This, this does not take long to make. Um, it's super easy. And say you want to transform the full circle without having to move each one individually, you can do that by using a transform geometry node after the join geometry. And now we've got this beautiful rose window or radial or anything that you can use in a number of different ways and it's the possibilities are endless. This could look like anything and you can continue to iterate it on it as much as you want. Bonus tip for this video that I wanted to show you guys is uh, take this effect and put it somewhere. You know, I feel like in a lot of videos like these, we talk about the effects and then we don't know what to do with them. So my challenge to you is to actually put this effect to use. So. I've created a sort of like museum or a gallery space that I've put this effect inside of and it operates somewhat like a rose window. But you could do anything with this. You could put it in um, a, a different gallery space. You could put this in a forest. You could put this in on top of a mountain, like acting as like the sun rising or anything. Um, try, just try and do a little something there. And what I've noticed in my own artwork is that really elevates tutorials because instead of just doing what I've seen on screen, I've actually taken a step further and try to utilize it in some way. And what I've noticed is that if I do that, I can then retain the information and actually incorporate it in future artworks, whether it's using the effect directly or simply applying it to something else. That. If you've seen Crossmind Studios, I love their channel. I'll link the video if I, can if I can find it. Their videos are really long, but he had one really, really cool tip. I think it was the Harry Potter one, but he basically said, whenever you feel like you're done with a work of art, especially when you feel like you're done with it, just push it 30% further. Or I think he said, uh, you're only 70% of the way done. Whenever you get that feeling like, it's finally done. And then that extra 30% are like the small details and the things that you, you feel really, really, really good about. And so that's what I'm trying to say here. My bonus tip to you is try to do just a little bit more than what I've already shown you here.